is different than that person's philosophy. I don't care. Because fundamentally, we all believe in the same thing. We all believe in freedom. We all believe in liberty. We all believe in honest government. Honest government? Isn't that an oxymoron nowadays? <laughs> yes, it is. Sound money? Do you think the creatures that have taken over could have existed if they didn't have the funny money system? No. They could not. One of the first priorities is why I love Ron Paul so much. He runs a lousy campaign, though. Uh, that's why I love the guy so much. Because he wants to do away with the Fed Reserve. Amen. Yeah. 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 So the key to this whole thing is for people to start organizing within their states. Start paying attention to the people that are starting to ring the, the right sound of liberty with the right solutions. But how do we know what they are? Isn't everybody, isn't everybody talking? Isn't everybody, they're all concerned? Yes. Oh, they're all, Obama's concerned. He's, he, he brought us hope and change. Oh, I ain't got no more hope and I ain't got no more change left. It's gone. People are beginning to understand that. What I am seeing, as I said yesterday, I see people picking and choosing sides. Those that don't have a solution, those that don't have an answer, they're going to go away. It's those that keep pounding them. Look, I'm mad as hell and I'm not taking this anymore. This is my country. This is my life. This is my money. This is my property. You don't have any hold on me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If we can keep adding to the numbers, we have a chance of getting this country back. Amen. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Right. This is a very slow process. Hate to say it, because we don't have the millions and billions of dollars that the mainstream media have been playing with the truth for so many years. Yes. Could you imagine a Rush Limbaugh coming out tomorrow on his radio program saying, hey, I discovered a problem. The Federal Reserve is illegal and unconstitutional. They've ripped us stupid. <laughs> We're dead in the water. How much reaction do you think if he was really there to, instead of talking Republican versus Democrat, I'm so tired of this political oh, crap, I could scream. One side blames it on the other. In the meantime, uh -huh. the RMS Titanic is going down by the head, uh -huh. and she's going deep to never see the light of day again. That's us. We cannot let this happen. So my point here about this, this is, start, this, I've been watching this for 20 years now. Do you know how many educated people there are out there? I'll give you a little example. Go to republicbroadcasting.org. There is a story up there that was carried by, I think, Houston, Channel 2 CBS, Texas legislature. They just said that, you know what? Here in the state of Texas, we're gonna prohibit the TSA from violating people's rights, their privacy. No more groping. No more of this stuff. But in the body of the story, second line from the bottom, it said, but this may be superseded by federal law. And I'm like, but what I did, I was up in the wee hours of the morning last night. As of last night, there were 702 responses to that story, and I was shocked. Only about 2% you and I would consider negative. Everybody else is getting it. They're out there. They're mad as hell. Talk to people. 
reach out to them. Americans, there is a patriotic awakening sweeping into every corner of this great land. People just like you and me are feeling the infringement of an undisciplined and oppressive central government, expanding every minute of every hour of every day. Sadly, we've been asleep for too long, but I am pleased to announce today the sleeping giant is stirring. America, the greatest country and the most advanced civilization the world has ever known, is shaking off the sleepy cobwebs of a long slumber. She has heard a rally cry, and she is beginning to awake. Yes. Oh yes, she is waking, but what is she waking to find? Unfortunately, to her shock, she is opening her heavy eyes to see a country that is a far cry from the one born from adversity in 1776. The sleeping giant is awake to see a country where its government blatantly disregards the people's rights and as it steals from its treasury. America sees her government turning her hard-working men and women into slaves. That's right, slaves, buying their votes with entitlements. She waits to see another form of slavery where a whole new generation expects something for free, something for nothing. Sometimes, despite the warnings of a looming economic collapse and a national bankruptcy, they keep on. Oh yes, America is waking all right, and as her eyes clear from the haze of sleep, she is waking and she is angry as she learns her constitution, forged by the blood, sweat, and tears of her forefathers, is being trampled on, mocked and disregarded. Her precious constitution, designed brilliantly to guide a government that would protect the individual rights of its citizens, have now ignored for the sake of political power and gain. But there is good news. America is also waking to, to see her devoted citizens beginning to link arm in arm, in a movement much like the one that established her in the beginning. The Tea Party is Americans who are not afraid to stand in the tradition and history of America's first patriots, who realize that tyranny from a government was simply another form of slavery. The Tea Party understands all too well that freedom is not free. that in this country our citizens possess inherent rights that must never be taken from us, rights that we must never give away. As Patrick Henry reminded us after freedom is taken, there are only two alternatives, slavery or death. Therein lies the quote, give me liberty or give me death. Our forefathers bravely faced potential execution for treason as they flew a flag with the words, Don't tread on me. So when we talk about doing something, we have to quit thinking about doing as talking. We have to quit. We have to jump that divide and realize that we actually have to do something. Now, what can we really do? You can start thinking. Let me tell you that, for one thing, if uh, in, in the food industry, we know that local food will bring local jobs, local sustainability, local economy, local food security. It'll bring better health and a sustainable community. Henry Kissinger said years and years and years ago, own the oil, own the economies, own the food, own the people. 
It has never changed, folks. And we do not have enough food in America to feed Americans. We are net importers from China, Chile, and South America. So, if you want real power, you better start growing some food. Like in the Second World War, when 42% of our food came from backyards. We had food here where you could walk to it. Well, let me tell you what happens when you get food close. You don't have to spend, you don't have to drive food 1,500 miles, which is where our food comes from today, in the back of a trailer truck, and I know all about it because that's what I do. And those trucks get at best about eight miles per gallon, and that fuel by next year will be $5.50 a gallon, I guarantee it. And before too long, if we do not start down the road of relocalizing food, it will not matter how much gold you have, it will not matter how much silver you have, it will not matter anything, because as rich or poor, if you cannot eat, you are done. And I haven't done this song in years, but like, you know. Standing by my window, one cold and wintry day, when I saw the hearse coming, Lord, to take my mother away. successful, we're going to accomplish a limited government. We've got to be ready to be self-reliant, not just because of a day of disaster, but just every day. If we don't have the nanny, the children are going to have to be ready to start taking care of themselves. So I just think it's wonderful. It's a kickoff. I look forward to, to seeing it even bigger and better next October. The Tea Party, just as the oppressive, out-of-control government out of Great Britain reacted and caused an outlash in 1776 called the Boston Tea Party, our current out-of-control government in 2009 started what's called as the Tea Party Movement. Whether you call it the Tea Party Movement, whether you call it the 912 Group, whether you call it what I just refer to it sometimes as the Great American Wake Awakening, we're just trying to wake people up. That's all it's about. And just like how those actions in 1776 was radical, and those people were considered to be revolutionaries, it's time today for the revolutionaries to again take hold of our situation and seize the day to save our nation. Yes. Throughout the years, we've had regular folks and regular citizens who have stepped forward and saved our nation when it's on, been on the brink of defeat. We're the exact same way we are today. We are going to pull our nation back and we're going to save her because we are going to stand up for America. The Tea Party movement 
Look at everybody. Look across the aisle. Look at everybody sitting here. This is mainstream America. We see every walks of life. We see every type of income level. We see every race, every ethnicity, every age. This is mainstream America. Why? Because the core values of the Taney Party movement are mainstream. What are those core values? Fiscal responsibility, a constitutionally limited government, and free markets. There's nothing controversial about that. That's as mainstream as it gets. But you know, the left it wants to paint you, wants to paint me, wants to paint everybody who's trying to wake up as extremists. I say this tongue in cheek, but you know what? Let's be the best darn extremists that we can be. Yeah. Let's get out there and let's be what we've got to do to save our families, to save our communities, and to save our great nation. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said to his supporters, Today we say to you, the question is not whether we'll be extremists, but what kind of extremists will we be? The nation and the world are in dire need of creative extremists. What he was saying there was to be inventive and to be effective. This must be, and this must be what we've got to follow. Because if not, you know what's going to happen? Our words, our wishes, our actions are going to be distorted, and this movement will be destroyed, either by the establishment in the GOP or by the George Soros-funded political machine of the far left. Our Tea Party movement begins today with you. With the Tea Party movement, we don't need celebrity, we don't need stature, we don't need wealth. Just as the original Sons of Liberty and Daughters of Liberty in 1776, it just takes someone willing to say the things that need to be said and to do the things that need to be done. Now, to accomplish these goals, we've got to put our principles above parties, our principles above politicians, and characters above mere campaign promises. You know, John earlier said, don't get sucked in. Don't, don't let this movement be destroyed, regardless of what side is attacking it. And I'm going to say this. The left wants to paint the GOP. It wants to paint all of you. You're all extremists. You're all really, you're just secret closet Republicans. And that's all you are. You're, you're hateful. You're, you're all those things. We've all been painted that. And that upsets me and upsets you. We've got to be careful not to become the stereotype that they want to paint. Don't become the stereotype of just being a GOP operative who's there who's going to support the, the latest establishment candidate. You can name every single U.S. president since my favorite silent cow, Calvin Coolidge, and you can find at least some progressive policies that they supported. Policies that fed the government monster, that increased spending, that increased the central government control, and which took what was in the Constitution and turned it on its head. Pull out the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8. That's what Congress is to do, not anything beyond that. Look in comparison with everything Congress does and everything comes out of D.C. And every president who's been a part of perpetuating that over the years and generations of both parties, and that's what you've got. You've got progressives. That's what we need to work on. We've got problems. They're not insurmountable. They're getting dangerous. They're getting very dangerous. But the problems can be solved. The solutions actually are very simple. We just got to convince enough people to go along to understand that, you know, insanity is when you keep trying to do things that fail every time. The solutions are actually pretty, pretty easy, pretty easy to understand. What are not the solutions to the problem? Statism, redistribution, and European style socialism. That's not the answer. It's not the answer to trade in also, and this is something we've got to really keep an eye out for. We can't trade in an authoritative government that supports liberal policies for an authoritative government that supports conservative policies. They both have central planning. They both have statism. We've got to really be careful of that when we move forward in this next election. What we need to do is simple. Cut back the size, scope, and authority of the government and free our economy to a non-collective, non-cronyism, free market economy, and then simply make government obey and follow the Constitution. It's really that simple. Less government, less spending. That's the ticket to a free market economy. It sounds like common sense, doesn't it? it? Sounds a lot like common sense. 
We know that in the 235 years since the Declaration of Independence was drafted, and if you read that document, you see that what was happening was, was that King George was a tyrant. King George was going far beyond his powers. It had, it had, you know, it's simple to be able to put it in a capsule and say it had to do with representation. It was that and so much more. Reread that document. But compare that to where we are now. We are doing, and what we've done in the last two years in this movement is declare independence. We've declared our own independence. Look at what, what President Obama has done for his non-elected, non-reviewed, appointed czars. Don't even get me started on czars, okay? I, I, we don't have enough time on that, Mark. These guys, I tell you what though, you take the most liberal, most radical people you've ever talked to in your life, and they would, that person would be pretty darn reasonable mainstream compared to these czars. I mean, you can walk down the streets of Berkeley, California, and those people are more to the center right than this collection of clowns, okay? And I'm so glad when there's gonna be a change and these clowns get kicked out of the circus and leave Washington. Yeah. Look at some of the news of what's happened and how government has exercised its control in just the last couple weeks. A private company, Boeing, wants to take and wants to move a plant and open a plant in South Carolina. It's a private company. As long as it fits the zoning standards and all that type of stuff, it should be able to do what it wants to do. Obama's National Relations Board has said no. You can't do that because it might affect the labor relationship because South Carolina is a right to work state. That is a government telling private business of where you can and cannot open. And, it's going to re and if it keeps up, it's going, to re re it's going to result in the loss of thousands of jobs in South Carolina. That is an overstepping government, and it's a step government that we need to get rid of. Look at what Congress did this last year. They got bullied, where they bullied other people into a socialized form of medicine. We have a socialized form of medicine, and if we don't stop it, we've got to defund the Obamacare every step of the way. And when we have the votes, we're going to repeal the whole thing with that. Look what's happened to our national debt. I looked it up this morning. $14.3 trillion. 14, it's hard to wrap your mind around that. And what is Washington doing? What is Washington of both parties looking to do? They're gonna raise it. It's a family that can't afford the debt, so what do they do? Hey, let's sit down at the kitchen table and fill out another credit card application. That's what they're gonna do. I mean, there's, there's no surprise. There may be some drama on the news back and forth, and maybe some people will vote against it, but Congress is gonna raise the debt limit. They're gonna do it. They can't stand up. And all the promises have been made in this last year, the election and all that, we're, we're going to keep an eye on these folks. They just said the other day they weren't going to do an agency by agency budget review. John Boehner's office said that just the other day. They're not going to review the agencies budget by budget. We've got to get on these people. 2011 for the Tea Party movement is a watchdog year. We've got to be watchdogs. We've got to keep an eye on these people. It's a temporary job, folks. If they don't do their job, we send them back home in two years.